So right now, in this scenario, we're simulating uh, a high point uh, or high, hard to reach place. There's not to be a structure, it could be a cliff or something, but no one's at the victim yet. Uh, so we need to package the victim up, but we also need to access. And the only way to access is to send a rescuer up. So in this case, usually, like, if we already had people up there, we would just send that litter basket up while we're placing uh, and positioning this aerial. Uh, but in this case, uh, we're leaving it on the ground uh, because we want to set the position first and then do lockout, tag out, and then we're going to bring up our rescuer on this uh, kind of reverse leave skate block kind of system. Okay, so anchoring your uh, high point to the tip of your aerial ladder. Not all aerials uh, are made the same. Uh, ours, uh, we have, uh, I don't say cheap, but we have this pre-rigged uh, bar that goes to these uh, points that are welded. These things say max 250 pounds per eyelet. So the system where these pulleys are, uh, you could argue that that's uh, a max 500 pound. And so what does that really mean? You could say that that's a, a working load limit or a safe working load. It's on a design factor. It's usually four to one or five to one on that safety factor. So if we uh, go conservative and say four to one, and this is 500 pound working load, we could say that, okay, maybe this thing would break at 2000 pounds, um, which is not a whole lot. If you look at like OSHA standards for anchorages, they need to be 5,000 pounds minimum or 22 kilometers. Um, so, that's going to lead into kind of how we uh, justify and work a belay system. So this is a, a very quick, fast way to do it. Um, but if we didn't have this, or if we wanted to be uh, more safe, uh, we could just rig directly to our... Here, just, let's just treat this as a standard two-point anchor and rig directly to the rail of your area. Uh, and now here, we, we doubled up the slings because just for the sake of redundancy, right? Uh, in this scenario, we're going to operate a, a two rope system in a very specific way. And so just for sake of argument, like all the components, I want them independent. So each rope has its own independent components to include carabiner. That's why there's two carabiners, two pulleys, two slings, uh, just for that kind of redundancy. Um, you could argue that you don't need it. Some people could argue that you do need it uh, to each their own. We're going to go with uh, two. And one more important point I want to uh, kind of point out to you, you can see the bolts right there. So we don't want to anchor anything to the very, very tip because that's not part of the structure of the rail, the frame of the aerial. What is, however, is there where we actually put our sling. Uh, so just one of those minor details that's actually very, very important. <laughs> so we don't want to anchor to that. Those bolts are aren't rated. Um, this uh, is going to be uh, kind of best practices, really what you should, shouldn't do, considerations you should make uh, when deciding to use uh, a big aerial apparatus for um, a high point, whether that's a, a high directional or if hopefully you don't decide to use that as a, a straight up uh, anchor. And we'll talk about all the minutiae and the nuances. Uh, there are a lot of videos out there that uh, kind of have different methodologies, different trains of thought. Um, and we need to be careful when we're, when we're doing this because um, there's, there's a big argument for using an aerial ladder to actually move a live person. Um, well, okay, let's, let's talk about when you, when you would possibly do that. Um, maybe to rescue people out of an IDLH environment. That's usually for firefighting operations. And usually you're, you're putting victims, your rescuers, they're, they're on the ladder. It's not like an actual rope system that's uh, an adjunct to it. Um, and there's a OSHA regulation, uh, it's a Code of Federal Regulations about uh, prohibiting uh, using any kind of crane or hydraulic system machine uh, to lift live loads. Um, and where you can get away with it, where you can't, it's just going to be a judgment call. I mean, if you have a, if you have to do it and, and you do it and you pull it off and the rescue is a success and it's a great day and everyone's high-fiving each other, that's okay, great. Uh, but if not, if, if something goes wrong, then there's uh, you're opening up the box for liability because federal regulations prohibit uh, us using these things to actually move live loads um, if we're suspending them on a rope system. And there's like a spirit or a principle behind all that. 
and the principle there's there's two big things here um one is uh this aerial ladder, uh, the, the rope system is not integrated into the aerial ladder. So, um, so that means that we introduce a, a human element where we could potentially fail something. Uh, you can imagine if we decide to start moving and articulating the ladder, uh, we could potentially break our ropes if they're kind of routed or tied off through um, descent control devices. So uh, yeah, catastrophic failure there. Um, there's also the, the hydraulic element. Like these, these machines are very powerful and they can easily rip people apart. Um, also, there's a little bit of a lag. It's just like when you're driving a car and you have to slam on your brake. Well, you have to recognize it first, process, process that in your brain, and then like kill the switch and it goes to your foot. Same thing here, like the operator has to recognize that there's a problem and oftentimes they don't have a good vantage point and then they have to stop. And even when they stop, like the hydraulic system, sometimes it, it, it slows and still moves even after we stopped. So as a best practice and a federal regulation, when we're doing uh, uh, rope work, we're using this as a, as a high point, uh, we wanna do lockout, tag out, and abide by those OSHA regulations. I'm not gonna spatter them off uh, here, but um, they're out there. And so let's talk about just general physics, trigonometry. Um, that's what this is. It's a big game with trigonometry. The engineer has to be able to kind of figure out where where do we park our apparatus based on the objective. And so um, if you kind of look at how we're situated here, we our objective is the roof of our tower up there. Um, so we need to get above that at a distance that's reasonable to allow for clearance for the rescue package. Uh, we don't want to go too high, but we don't want to fall up short either. Um, and we want our angle to be as steep as possible. Uh, again, we don't want to fan our ladder out like that. The further out we go, it's this giant class one lever that creates a lot of torque uh, on the base. So the steeper our angle, the better. Uh, what that's gonna do also with our uh, directional, because it's high directional, it's gonna change the resultant forces and put them more in line. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna put them more in line with the frame, uh, the rails, with the actual stick. Um, and granted, you could argue that, well, oh, well, you're doubling the load through a directional. It's like, yeah, you are. Uh, and, and because of that principle, we also want to minimize the number of people we put on this. We don't want a rescuer uh, tending a patient uh, with an aerial apparatus high directional. So we just want to minimize the load, put one person on it. Um, in theory, if it was straight up and down through a whole 180 degree bend, you're, you're doubling that load. So you just do the math. You have a 300 pound person, okay, 600 pounds on, on the tip. That's the resultant, but that's like full straight up. Here, we're kind of fanning out. Maybe like your typical climbing, ground ladder climbing angle is about 70 degrees. So that's kind of what we want to uh, mirror here. So when we show up, uh, if we can park as close to the objective as possible, that'll set us up to achieving this balance of, of uh, getting that steep angle and minimizing the amount of extension that we need. Uh, the, the further out we extend, the weaker uh, it all becomes. And again, this isn't guide, so it's not like a guide high directional gen pole if you're familiar with the vortex. There's, there's no guying anywhere. It's just a big stick in the air, so there's a lever. So there's a torque effect down at the base. And that's kind of the weak point. We want to minimize that torque effect. Um, so yeah, park close, uh, get a steep angle, and minimize the extension. Um, and then one more thing I didn't cover, uh, what you should never ever do <laughs> is, uh, is extend and retract that ladder if there's a live load, especially if they're on the ladder because the rungs can overlap and that can cut people's feet off. So one of those things to consider. Um, let's walk you through the rigging. Um, and in this scenario, um, Again, we're assuming that we don't have access to our victim, but we know they're up there. So we need to get a rescuer up there with the gear that we need to package the, the victim or the patient with. So that's why everything is still on the ground. The litter is still on the ground. We don't have people up there. So we're actually going to lift uh, the rescuer using just standard mechanical advantage systems, not with the aerial itself. We don't want to... Uh, do that. We want lockout, tag out on our aerial. Your standard four point bridle, this can be a, a myriad of different things. For our application, uh, we do double long tail ball ends as a default. It's just, it, it spans the all the rigging uh, stuff we do. Like this seems to fit the bill for everything we do. So double long tail ball end, two rope system. Um, it goes up through our high directional. Now let's pan this up where the line comes back. And we've hooked in 
an Aztec or set of floors because what this is going to do is, is this reverse scape lock concept. Um, we're going to try to maintain uh, the litter and the rescuer away from the wall uh, and suck them up in line with the stick. And that's what the set of fours is going to do for us. Uh, I'll take that out after uh, we, we get on the roof and we package the victim up. I'll remove the Aztec. Um, what's going to take the place of the Aztec for the victim is this tagline right here. So. Portuguese ball line onto our litter rail, um, and our ground operators are going to operate this to vector the rescue package on the way back down. The and we're going to try to keep everything in line with the stick. And so, if you get the camera over to me, and let's look at our line as it goes up to the high directional, and then we come back. Everything is in line with the stick, so we aren't off to the side, left or right. Everything needs to be straight in line and then we hit our first butt block or directional because we need some sort of uh, field, hall field or, or operating range. So we hit our first directional uh, on the frame, kind of low uh, by the hydraulic rams, uh, to a second directional um, on the outrigger into our operating devices. In this case, what we're doing is um, a mirrored dual capability two tension rope system. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're not going to belay from up there because again this in this scenario we don't have access so so we can't really send anybody up to operate a belay line from the roof if we could that would be my, my go-to it's just do a single line on the aerial and then belay high from the structure that would minimize any potential impact forces that we may have to see on the aerial the aerial is not designed to actually handle that um, you could collapse the boom you could create catastrophic failure on the aerial you do that um, however since now you can say well wait a second you're you're belaying through the high directional well yes and no it's, it's a dual capability two tension rope system that means that on both our hull and our lower our operators are going to do everything in our power to share that tension equally and so yes one line is belaying the other simultaneously and if one thing should fail the residual impact forces are pretty much minimal. Um, so that mode of operation we can get away with. What we don't want to do is do a single main, single belay operation. So like a, a tandem prusik belay, for example, down there with the MPD is what we don't want to do. I, I want to mirror and share the load the whole time. That seems to be like the good compromise between this, well, where, how do we belay adequately? Just, just hook up two lines, have redundancy, um, just treat it as a, a two tension system at all times. This is, these are 200 foot ropes. We came up a little bit short, so our ladders should be at a minimum 300 feet. Uh, so lesson learned, right? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go up with the litter. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna connect it with a set of fours. I'm just gonna use a, a prusik into the yoke and then ASAP back, ASAP back up on the long tail, so long tail line. So plenty of other videos I have on, on how to rig that up. So um, cool, let's start. Reset. Resetting, okay, so now I'm being hauled up and I'm actually managing uh, the set of fours and I'm gonna pull myself in. So right here you can see I'm clear off, but when I get closer, I'm gonna get towards the wall. So let's summarize what we've got here. Double long tail bowline into the yoke. I'm clipped in on a, on a fixed prusik. I don't have any adjustability. I don't need that. My backup's on the ASAP. Uh, this is just my pull strand for the Aztec um, and your standard bridle. So this Aztec, if you look over here, um, I'm gonna actually, once I get closer to the top, this thing's gonna collapse. And this rope here, the resultant's gonna push more in line with the ladder as I get up to the top because the space and the clearance diminishes. So let's keep going. Okay, ready. Holy! Holy! Reset. Resetting! Resetting. Okay, now I'm pulling myself in. Holy! Reset. Resetting! Okay. Alright, so now I'm full on as close as I can Holy. get on this Aztec. And I'm just gonna sit tight right there and let them continue their what they're doing. Resetting. So again, 200 feet of rope. A lot of resets because we had to park that ambulance really oh, close. Uh, but with longer rope, we could park that ambulance further out and we have a better, a better throw on our mechanical advantage. So nice. And now I'm gonna 
try and swing myself so that I don't hit the, any obstructions or the wall. So right now my feet are kind of almost on the wall. Right there. We're good. Cool. And I'm gonna pass this off to you. It's still recording. Okay. One more. Copy. So right now I'm off plumb. So this reverse skate block, I need to get straight on over the parapet. So I'll just release the Aztec and swing out a little bit. So right about there is good. Ready for down. Ready for down. So yeah, spotting, getting the, the placement is critical in this case, right? So we don't want to be too far away. We don't want to be too far in either. We want to be just kind of right in this nice little sweet spot. And we just have to be mindful of how far we can go on this Aztec. I can only go 10 feet uh, to get me in back in the plumb line. On the ground! On the ground! Okay. Slack! Slack! So now that we're here, I, I don't need this anymore. Uh, because if you think about it, like, this is going to get hung up because I'm not going to be tending. No, there's nobody going to be available to tend this on the way down. It's just going to be a victim. Tagline! Prepare for down! Okay. Hey Cap! Walk to your right! Toward the south. There you go. Good. There's our high point. Everything's in line. We're good. Try to get as close in line to the stick as possible. All right, so uh, in this scenario, uh, slightly different uh, tweak than the last one. Uh, we still want to rig our high point with the ropes in as we position this. This time, we're going to end up, uh, as we send this ladder up and over across this obstacle, and this is a building, but we're going to assume that this could be water, it could be lava, it could be like a rubble pile with like a thousand foot drop in the middle where we were able to get rescuers access through this obstruction on the same level to reach our victim but we have so we have people here ready to 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 rig and support but we don't have any gear and so what we're gonna end up doing is floating this whole stick with the litter all the way up and then we're gonna extend it beyond this obstruction in this case the structure and then we're gonna lower it down to our crew here when we do that we're gonna have one tagline that's already deployed for uh let's just say like our, our near side here um, and then another tagline that's already rigged but it's in the litter is going to be for the far side on the opposite side over here so what that looks like is another again standard uh four point bridle rigging with a double long tail ball on right here uh, this tagline um, is for the opposite far side the near side tagline is already rigged and it's deployed and it's flaked on the ground so this is going to be operational like right from the get-go we don't even need to, to put the ropes in any device because there's no load on this. It's just a litter, right? We can rig all that when we're set and ready to go. All right. Hey, Jan, you can go full out. We're good, Steve. 
Okay, and now he can lower. And so if I was the receiving end of this, I just received the empty package and then we'll start our rigging from there. Okay, cool. So now we have our near side tagline already set and ready to go. Uh, and then we're gonna deploy our far side tagline. Get these long tails out of the way. Get our far side tagline out. So we're set and now we're ready to deploy on the far side. And now, and now that we, we've done this, you can see like, okay, we're not at a good angle. We're way over here. So what we wanna do is uh, reconfigure and we're gonna try to do a combination of a steep angle and a minimal extension. So whatever that looks like, but we wanna be above the center of our obstruction uh, or the apex. Steve, okay, we're going to center. Why are you going to Are you okay with the short line? Um, so, if I can maintain like a 45 degree angle, that would be good. So really we're gonna have to go steeper. He might have to extend back out. So really what he needs to do is raise this thing up pretty steep. And it's kind of this balancing act. Like, okay, the, the, the steeper it is, the better, but also the, the, the more extension, the worse. But in this case, you kind of, yeah, that's probably okay. I'd say that's a good balance. So our, our aerial position, uh, again, like, if we have the ability to, we want to get as close to our objective as possible, but maybe there's a fence here, maybe there's something else here that we can't get any closer. So we have to go further out and further out we go, the more extension we have. And there's this delicate balancing act between uh, getting like a steep angle and minimizing the extension of the aerial. We package our patient. We're going to have a tagline operator on one side, a tagline operator on the other side, and then two mainline operators. Uh, again, this is not a a dedicated belay so it's not a single main single belay system it's a two tensioned rope system specifically mirrored dual capability two tension rope system with a pair of mpds with asaps on the beckets when we haul up we're just going to probably just do a dual three to ones um, so that will minimize uh, any stretch in our lines so if any one line failed yes technically we would have a belay through our high point which is a big no-go or not a big no-go but it's ill-advised uh, but when we operate with a two tension rope system dual capability uh, there's a lot less uh, shock force potential all right hey eric i'll, I'll call you far side tagline yeah and then steve you'll be near side tagline i'll be near side tagline copy okay taking black is taut you can take on yellow Okay, you guys are rigged for a haul? Okay. Okay, mains are ready, far side ready? Ready. Ready, near side ready. Okay. Left side ready. Okay. Up. And then hold tension there, Eric, on far side. Perfect. Resetting. How tight is that? It's tight. Yeah. <laughs> I've muntered into it. <laughs> See if you can start to come in. And you can start to let out a little bit, Eric. Far side, let out. Okay. Okay. Okay, you've cleared it. We're directly overhead. We can convert to a lower. Oh, very cool. <laughs> okay. Down on mains. Down on mains. Okay, slack. Okay, so just two examples of scenarios, uh, simulated scenarios, the best we could with uh, our facilities. So, kind of best practices, uh, things to consider when using uh, an aerial ladder. Um, one thing I didn't mention was um, using this as an anchor frame, like 
putting like a mechanical advantage or a set of fours that often people do just clip in right there and then just start putting the system right on the tip um yeah i'd say that's probably a a less preferable practice because your 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 results are straight down in that case and you're creating this big torque lever effect right there at the base so if we're doing anything with aerials as a general best practice we want to treat them as directional frames and try to do everything we can to kind of get the results of force as close in line with the stick as possible